Right, so now on to Haiti, where a lot of the information I'm getting is uh, from the, this great work by Patrick McFarlane. Uh, he put out a podcast already on it. He has released an article on his uh, Rockfin page uh, where you could get access to that if you donate to him. Uh, his article is really fantastic and will run at the Libertarian Institute this week. So what Pat highlights is that, I guess, probably 10 days ago now, a, a uh, last Saturday, there was a serious earthquake in Haiti um, that I, I think it was in the 7 range, maybe a 7.6 or a 7.3 I saw. And this is a country that was devastated and it has not been rebuilt from an earthquake in 2010 and has also been hit by uh, different uh, hurricanes in the Gulf. And, uh, you know, th there's just several reasons that there are infrastructure and humanitarian, you know, shortages in Haiti uh, prior to this. But this uh, particularly particular earthquake was serious and caused a lot of damage. Uh, I, I believe so far the the casualty number I saw was 2,200 dead. I'm not sure exactly uh th this I, I believe was confirmed so i'm not sure how much higher the estimates are going to be how many people they haven't been able to find yet uh especially as after this uh, uh tropical storm rolled through and i think it was possibly going to be a hurricane and didn't get to that uh serious of a status which i'm sure was very fortunate uh but nonetheless high winds are probably and rains are a huge issue when you have infrastructure problems so you know figure like sewer lines that are probably damaged uh people living in tents and how like you know camping in a, a thunderstorm is rough camping in a tropical uh storm i'm sure as hell so uh, it's probably been very rough for the people of haiti uh the u.s uh at the request of usaid the pentagon is sending uh troops and ships to haiti now there is a history of U.S. intervention in Haiti, and in fact, I believe the U.S. picked up the same uh, operation name that they had before uh, in Haiti for th this new operation, which is the Joint Task Force Haiti. And in the past, this was a huge debacle. It caused a massive cholera outbreak that killed thousands of uh, people in Haiti. Uh, that didn't need to happen. Uh, for the most part, the aid efforts failed to produce anything tangible. Uh, there's a great ProPublica article. If you Google, uh, billions were spent and six houses were built. You could go and look into see. And uh, Pat summarizes it very fantastic and says, uh, short of the rubble being cleared from the streets, not much was done uh, with the billions of dollars that was donated to Haiti. And so the country was in a, a poor situation. Of course, uh, prior to this, you had the, uh, in July, the president of Haiti, Jovenal Mose, uh, assassinated in his home. Uh, the day that he was assassinated, he was set to announce uh, Ariel Henry uh, to be the new prime minister of the country, and that would replace uh, Claude Joseph. Now, because uh, Mosey was killed before uh, Henry was appointed, uh, Claude Joseph then assumed reigns of Haiti until the U.S. switched and started backing Henry, uh, who is now, I guess, the de facto leader of Haiti, although it's still unclear of who was behind the assassination plot uh, behind Mosey's death. Now, the U.S. is deploying 2,000 Marines, or two, not 2,000, excuse me, 200 Marines uh, to Haiti. They are coming from North Carolina, and I apparently there's a lot of, you know, medical units here and stuff like that. You also have the U.S. sending uh, the USNS Burlington, which is a fast-paced cargo ship. If you look at some of the assets that the U.S. is deploying, some of them... Uh, I guess are more of an issue for like PR reasons, right? Because the U S military and it is a part of the, it's such a essential part of the U S empire and has engaged in all these nation building efforts and has been the front for all the CIA regime change efforts and weapons funneling efforts all over the world. There's a lot of reasons to be skeptical. Anytime the U S deploys any asset to any country. However, sometimes the U S deploys assets, you know, to these countries that, 
that can be helpful even if they are covers for other nefarious things but you know this cargo ship is probably bringing much needed water and medicine to haiti uh the chinooks that they're deploying could be helpful in you know transporting these goods around or maybe in uh you know clearing some of the rubble some of these other uh, assets could be useful now another thing that's being brought on these ships that i guess has more of a question mark to me are covid vaccines now it's going to show a quick graph here and again i'm not trying to make any general claims about uh, the coronavirus or anything like that. But this graph on the page, I'll describe it for the people only listening, shows the daily new confirmed COVID-19 deaths per million. And there is a light blue line for Haiti, a red line for the Dominican Republic, and then the United States. I thought these would be some good countries to compare. Um, if you have is showing that, you know, Haiti as peak has like, uh, I think 4.9 uh deaths per million per day as its peak, where the U.S. is actually at 10 at one point, so multiple times higher. And there's only one point on this entire graph where the numbers are even close. And in fact, Haiti's uh, COVID numbers have even been lower uh, fairly consistently than the Dominican Republic, which I, I think is comparable as it shares an island. Although I, I do think Haiti has like more infrastructure and uh, more poverty. So it, it is maybe surprising that Haiti's numbers would have been better of the two countries, uh, but that is the case. Anyways, this number definitely doesn't show a COVID crisis at all in Haiti. And in fact, if you're looking at that and you're saying that people from the United States, which, you know, has increasing uh, by that graph COVID number, sending those people to Haiti may actually put Haiti at risk for more of a COVID outbreak. That's not something being considered. And even if they are, you know, say they're bringing vaccines vaccines or something like that um, and the U.S. personnel are vaccinated it's been shown that you could transmit uh, COVID with the vaccine anyways and if the, you know there's not a major COVID outbreak in Haiti right now you could possibly be bringing more COVID with all these troops if that's you know an issue something you're looking at you know preventing and, and slowing down and so it's a real I guess mystery to me as to why the u.s is so concerned to bring all of these covid vaccinations to haiti unless it's just a pr effort and no americans really bothered to look you know if what haiti is really in need of right now is probably more bottles of water than covid vaccines uh, the U.S. personnel will remain in Haiti for up to four months. Uh, check out Patrick McFarland's article. Uh, he gets into the history of USAID uh, being the front for some of the CIA uh, regime change operations and stuff like that and why people of Haiti uh, would be skeptical and wouldn't want this U.S. aid.